And we are on the air. What's yeah, up? yeah. What's up, everybody? This is uh, Drake Nelson. The uh, viewers and critics oh, agree. Shit. Go what on the hell is that? newest hit. <laughs> what did we say about him? I never. I, I always forget that part's gonna uh, happen. One of the happen. best new comedies. Not the commercials yeah, that they the just spike you with. Commercial, because I keep the page open on um, the actual broadcast deal. Uh huh. You know what I mean? Just so we can chat and shit. But it like I always forget that that happens. So yeah, we're uh, we're in the chat room. Um, yeah. So uh, right off the bat, we got to tell you guys that uh. We just got some new lights in here, and uh, Mr. Wayne Walsh over there, who's raising his hands, uh, did the majority of the work, which was great because I'm pretty lazy and fat and um, I'm good with power tools. Wayne's good yeah. with tools and shit. Oh God, do you have the the picture that you could pull up from your from your phone with the Suzuki and the, oh, the 16 yeah. foot two by four? That was amazing. Let me see if I can find it. That yeah, was great. Um, we had to get a big, huge piece of wood in here and uh to mount the lights what too. is it it was like 14 feet wayne it was 16 feet 16 feet 16 foot piece of two by four it's actually going across his ceiling right now that we mounted the the lights to yeah. and um yeah, i no longer it. have a truck like i did for a while there so luckily i had the top off of the suzuki so we just Dang. Jammed it. I jammed it in the back of there and bungee corded that shit down and put a red flag on the end of it. And we we're we we're in business, man. Oh, yeah. We we drove around Reno like that for a little while. You'll see. It was amazing. Hold on, let me get it. Man, Facebook's taking forever. Come on, there hella it is. gay. All right, let me see if I can pull this up. <laughs> It's pretty crazy. I know the commentary as I'm trying to pull it up is like completely lame. We'll just do this one. So here's a, a yeah. There's the of there's the two by four with the red flag <laughs> on the end sticking out of the back of the Suzuki. I watched it. It it cleared like barely. You know, like the street signs and stuff. Yeah. And traffic lights. It was like maybe six inches or less beneath those. Like it barely cleared up. Oh, yeah. We only got in trouble that one time when uh, you hit a speed bump. Oh, yeah. And it bowed and then we could hear it yeah. try to crack a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that if was If we'd hit crazy. it harder, I might have broke it in half. Yeah, it was nuts. I thought we were going to lose it, but we, that little Suzuki held strong, man. <laughs> 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 that thing's a little red tank, dude. That's fun, man. So. Yeah, that's what we got going on right now. So, um uh we that's why we're we're lit nice and pretty. It's nice and bright. You can see the red and blotchiness of my white face here. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you can see how uh bad my skin is and how gray I'm getting in my beard here. My girlfriend loves the gray though. I don't know why. I think she's crazy myself. But. Yeah, Chelsea digs the the gray and that I'm getting in the side of my my hair. I'm not a fan. Me neither. Just, I mean, just not on you because you can't pull. It. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Fuck you, fag. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, we want we got a special guest on the show today. We're we gonna, do. We're gonna call him in a minute. Um, Dante from Los Angeles. What's Dante's last name? Uh, I think it's Nero, but I could be wrong. Dante Nero from Los Angeles. Comedian. He just he kind of he's 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 so awesome. He typically just goes by one name. Oh yeah, Dante. Like, yeah. like Madonna. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, I can't pull that off because no. there's already a guy named Drake. Well, you could just go to Fagface or something. I don't know. <laughs> just go completely. MC dipshit. MC dipshit. There you go. Yeah, I like it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> MC dipshit. MC dipshit. I'm MC so, dipshit. Yeah, we're gonna um try and keep the uh podcast relatively consistent from here on in. Tuesday, two PM is gonna be like our uh our permanent time slot. So uh we're like I said, like in past shit, we're gonna try and keep it pretty interactive. People can call in and stuff like um, Skype in, Skype in, yeah. My my cell phone is actually hooked up 
to the mixer right now. And um, so if you have my number, but I'm not going to give it out right now. <laughs> but if somebody has it, they can call in. Old lady just text me. What would she say? Uh, she she sent me a text at 2. I was like, do you have 15 minutes before you start? <laughs> nope. Apparently We're not. We're rolling, sweetheart. Sorry about that. Um, can't stop now. Let's see if we got anybody uh, actually in the room right now. No one's chatting, which is fine. I can't see if we have any, no no viewers right now either none <laughs> <laughs> nobody but we're we're recording well, this yeah we'll record it and then put it up on YouTube too yeah exactly uh, I've seen a, a few of our podcasts have gotten a, a fair number of views yeah. so on people, YouTube like when we're huge later on in life um, you know you can go back and see that's what I that's what I try and do like with all my shit is I try I mean. I throw it on there, and you know, I like to be able to show like the progression of uh, how me and people around me get funny or whatever. So that's why I throw a lot of stuff on there. But um, I'm sure it'll cost me some bookings later on down the line when they're like doing research and they're like, "Why would we book this fucking guy when he throws up a bunch of shit online?" But I don't care. I'm not quitting the day job for a while unless I get fired. Um, <laughs> <laughs> No, they they would never fire you. you. Well, they could, but you'd have to really piss them off. Yeah, which I'd piss them off a lot. Yeah, but like you're one of the few people who does what you do as well as you do, and so they kind of need you. Yeah, they kind of do. I'm pretty. I'm pretty replaceable. Not to though. mention, not to mention <laughs> for the comedic reasons, the fees that they pay you. You know what I mean? Like your your salary is shit. Yeah, I mean it's radio. If they get rid of me, yeah, they're gonna have to pay somebody even more. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) They don't want to do. It's not cost effective to to get rid of you. I want to show that. um, Have you? Did you hear what Mitt Romney said recently? Oh, the they somebody taped. It was like a a private kind of deal. Yeah, and he was going off. I want to show that. Basically saying, uh, "Fuck everybody that's not rich," because they all act like they're victims, and you know. The those people are gonna vote for Obama anyway, cause and you know they f- feel like they're entitled to health care and blah 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 blah. Yeah, you I know. See if he ba- he basically it. said, "Hey, you rich guys, vote for me because yeah. all I all I need is a, is an additional uh, five to ten percent to win this shit." Yeah. Okay. Here it is, real quick. We'll play this and then we'll we'll call um, Dante real quick. Absolutely. We can need to turn it up on that. Isn't that crazy though? Like I, what was even crazier is that you know <laughs> they said you know I would like if I would like it if they posted the whole thing, the whole thing. You know when when it's when it's like one line, when it's just like yeah, well I ate a puppy, and that's all they put. You know then then you can take that out of context. But when you go off for like a minute and a half straight, 
you can't you can't take that out of context. Exactly. What you said is what you fucking said. See, that's that's Mitt Romney's biggest problem is he thinks people are stupid. Like well, this goes back a long time. Well, a lot of people who vote that way <laughs> are fucking <laughs> stupid. I'm sorry, they're dumb. Well, I think people who uh, most, they like most people who vote are stupid. And what I mean, <laughs> no, I mean both ways. And what I mean by that, and it, I'm just basing this on myself. I'm not really calling anybody stupid, but. I work in the uh, media field, and the majority of the people who elect officials in this country uh, just get their information from television ads. You know what I mean? And those are so misleading and so one-sided, and you know, nobody's actually like doing the research, you know, to um, to uh, you know uh, yeah. put their two cents in on who to vote for. And I'm just as bad, which is why I don't vote. You know what I mean? A lot of people give me shit. Oh, you should vote, man. Yeah, that's your right. You know, but I don't know enough about politics to vote. You know what I mean? And I'm fully, you know, uh, uh, comfortable admitting that. And I think the majority of people in this country, like I said, man, they, you know, they're not reading uh, magazines or newspapers or extended uh, bits of information. So, but like Mitt Romney is terrible about like he'll just go on stage and he'll just be like. Um, uh, uh, I can't remember. Oh, there was something in the debate that I'll never forget. Like they asked him a, a question, and he was, you know, it was about the economy. He didn't even ask answer the question, and then the guy called him on it and was like, uh, "I asked you about the economy, and you started talking about abortion, right?" And he was like, he said something like, uh, "Hey, uh, you know, you just have to accept the answer that I gave you." <laughs> you know what I mean? Really? Like, just, just full on, just steamrolled the guy. Fuck. Yeah, I hate Mitt Romney. Um, the way I look at it is, is as far as um, fiscal policy, any candidate that goes on record, you know, with with fiscal policy before the election, none of that shit's gonna stick. You know, like all that shit has to change yeah. and flux, and 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 it is corporations that run this country, and yeah. and the the big difference I believe is is where they stand on social issues. That's that's why I vote. You know, because I think, you know, I, as far as as far as big business and and you know. The, at least the left pretends they care about people <laughs> who don't have money. You know what I mean? They'll yeah. they'll throw a, the the change from underneath their couch cushions and go, "There you go, you yeah. you you go you go have fun with that." At least they pretend. Where the right is like, "No, fuck them. You can't <laughs> you can't have that thirty five cents I found on my yeah. co- couch cushions. That's mine." The, and so it, really, the to me the the line is is on uh, social issues yeah right like i you know abortion birth control you know immigration these these are things that that are easy to to wrap your head around and well not me because i'm a i'm a fucking retard you're not a retard (laughs) you like to pretend you're stupid but you're not i wouldn't hang out with you if you're stupid oh thanks man but um what do you wait we could both be stupid what do you mean I know I'm not stupid. <laughs> I wish I was stupid sometimes. Sometimes I get up and be like, you know, life would be so much easier if I was fucking dumb. You know, like like if I could just sit down and watch Honey Boo Boo and be okay with how shitty the world is, then that, uh, it would be it would be easier. It's pretty easy for me because I'm pretty stupid. Yeah. Um, I want to show you something that uh. You're just better at shutting your brain off than I oh, am. Oh, yeah. You're not stupid. You can just filter it better. Another one killed by lion God skin. damn it. <laughs> Fucking commercials everywhere, man. I'm trying to rip off somebody else's media. God damn it. I'm tired of these fucking commercials. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if you can pay YouTube to take all this shit off. Is this the video I was talking about? Oh, yeah. So I saw this, you know, I, you know, I work in the hey, fucking YouTube, news. YouTube, if you're listening, which I know you're not. They will be. <laughs> uh, check out check out this uh, this reporter who scares the shit out of this baby today, dude. It's fucking hilarious. Let's play this. Farm kid, how you doing there, Pally? Right now, you know, I know he can't say anything right now, but you know what he's saying right now? E e e e e. <laughs> that is the most MC evil looking child. Get the camera off my face. I'll take this cantaloupe. Oh no! <laughs> oh, Dan, 
Don't make him cry. I love that. I love that kid. I love when that happens. Way to make a baby boy cry on live television. You know what? Most babies are cute. That one's totally not. Oh, he was just pissed, man. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> okay. We're just TV news is stupid. Right. Yeah, it's it's stupid. Oh man, his face was priceless though. Yeah, I was like, get away Look from at me, his you face. fuck. Look at his face. He's so aggravated. <laughs> He's just like, I gotta take a shit, and you're bothering me. And then look at this goober. Like, like look, look at the baby now. He's just like, you fucking scumbag. Pile <laughs> of shit. Bite that finger off if I had teeth. You're trying to get ratings by making fun of me. Well, fuck you. Now he looks like a dick because uh, the baby starts crying. So what's up, man? Let's jump in and see if we can get Dante on the Skype. Let's do it. I don't know how well it's going to work. We shall find out. All right, here we go. We're going to go ahead and uh, call failed. That's not good. It's not good at all. And Dante was like, fuck this. I'm going to go hit the slots. Do you gamble at all? Who, me? Yeah. Yeah, every once in a while. I don't. Why like, not? I, I don't know. I just quit. Like Somewhere around like age 23 or whatever, when I moved back to Reno. You just said, fuck gambling? Full, yeah, I just it doesn't appeal to me at all. Because more often than not, I lose. Yeah. Which is... Most people's experience, because that's how the fucking numbers run. Yeah, you know, and and I just it's not it's not fun for me because like if I had extra money, I'd rather blow it on something elder than gambling. I guess you know what sucks for me is I I barely ever win. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I don't win that often either. I have I'm terrible. Like I, I don't have like any fucking cool stories about. Oh, I dropped a nickel in a in a machine and I did. I did a you know dollar I mean? like, into a machine once and cashed out with like fifty five. Really? Yeah. That's not bad. The girl I was dating at the time ended up in the emergency room that night too. Good times. Uh, why? Uh, drank too much. Oh, yeah. Did you get which, her fucking stomach pumped or what? I don't. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> that was the girl from Thailand, and so we were drinking together at uh, Rumbolians, and um, like, meanwhile, I'm sneaking into the bathroom and taking hits of a bottle of tequila I've got in my jacket. So she's only drinking the the cocktails that we're having at the table. Yeah. Which, you know, we're big, strong cocktails, but I'm drinking that plus, you know, the tequila. So it didn't occur to me that she's drinking way too much for a person her size. Yeah. You know? Didn't occur to me at all. And all of a sudden, she's like, you know, she she held it down. Like, you know, I could tell she was drunk, but, like, she wasn't. She wasn't staggering all over the place or any of that shit. Yeah. So she's like, she excuses herself to the bathroom. And just never comes back. Like, and I'm waiting for her she to come died? out. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting for her to come out, and that's when I put the money in the, the slot machine. Yeah. So eventually I, I'm like, I have a woman go in there and like, hey, can you see what's up with this girl? And she's like, oh, she's passed out on the floor. <laughs> nice. And so then, you know, whole, you know, casino security gets involved, and... You know, they pull her out of there on a stretcher, and they take her to the hospital, blah, blah, oh, blah, 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 terrible. blah, blah. Luckily, she had health insurance. Oh, that's good, then. Yeah. When you have health insurance, it's kind of like a free pass, right? Pretty much. It's like, oh, fuck it, you know? It's like a get-out-of-jail-free card. Yeah. So, yeah, I won 50 bucks and met the next girlfriend that night. Not that I broke up with her right away. Who, but Chelsea? I no. No. Oh, the next one in the line of uh Right. The line of bad decisions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. That soda you got me is giving me the gas. So no no luck on the Dante. No, still. no. He's like, fuck these guys. I think he split, yeah. Because I'm not even seeing him on the um I could text him. On the thing.
Yeah. It could be my Skype, too. I'm not really sure. Yeah, your Skype is being weird today, it would yeah. seem. Well, you know, I need to fucking, um, like, practice how to do all this shit. Mm. I'm going to try and call, uh, I'm trying to call nah. Neil O'Brien real quick, but. Neil O'Brien? It's not working. Anyway, I should just call him because my phone's. On the, I uh, just texted him. Oh, yeah? What yeah. He hasn't got back to you yet? Not yet. I will let you know, my friend. Yeah, if you could do that, that would be great. Um. <laughs> <laughs> got everybody, ex- all, our, our zero viewers zero. all excited that there was going to be a special guest. Mm-hmm. Oh, two viewers right now. Two yeah. of them. We got two, two rocking right now. Oh, he says he's ready. Oh, he is? Yeah. So, all right, let's try this again. Let's This is the this is the kind of professionalism that our viewers have come to expect. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, the lighting's better, so it's just you can see how fucked up we are better. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah, it's um it's pretty crazy. Mm, indeed. It's weird. Now I'm not seeing his thing. Indeed. Recent Dante. He's not online yet. Well, then we'll just uh, we'll just keep watching for it to pop up. So, um, h- tell us about uh, tell us about Sunday night. Didn't you go out to a couple of shows that night? I went to one show. Um, Pat Shilato, good friend of mine. Good dude, that guy. Pat Shilato started a uh, an open mic at. Um, well, it's a showcase, right? It's yeah, but it kind of like turned in. It kind of turned into an open mic, but it was it was it was cool. Um, there was there was like nobody there. I saw three crackhead girls walking by. I was like, "Hey, we got comedy going on," and uh, they came for a while until uh, one of the comics went up and uh, told one joke, and then they left. <laughs> So uh, I was giving him shit all night. I was like, "Dude, you fucking chased the crowd away." Who was that? Um, I shouldn't say his name because he's new, and I don't want to give him a bad reputation. All right, you'll have, you'll have to tell me. Yeah, afterwards. I'll tell you off camera. He's a good dude. He's just starting out, but um, and it's not like his fault. They were shit house drunk anyway. You know what I mean? I don't want to give the impression that like he ran them off, but they were like, um, at one point like they were talking because they're drunk, and he was like, "Hey, shut the fuck up!" Right? And then they were like, "Okay, we're out of here." <laughs> so um. But it's not like, you know, it's his fault or nothing. Like I said, they were just fucking crackheads. But um, it was a fun night, like, getting out during the week. You know, Wayne, it's really hard for me because I work the day job and I work shitty hours, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know. But um, uh, Pat hit me up and was like, hey, man, I'd really like to have you come out, help me get this shit going. So I was like, yeah, fuck it. I would it. have loved to have been there to, to support, but I entered a... Um improv class and oh yeah that's right that's and right. i can't i can't miss any of them or else i won't be able to do the next level class afterwards. yeah so because um, i found out about the class after they had already done too so he's like yeah you can start now but you can't miss any of them yeah so which is kind of understandable yeah like, you gotta you know keep the riff raff out but you know i mean he didn't know beforehand how awesome I would be, <laughs> and how you know I could I could miss a couple classes, you know. Oh yeah, I, I you know how I could just like audit level one and just move straight into level two. <laughs> yeah, I wanted. Yeah, you're rubbing off on me. I'm totally like doing like a Drake impression right there. Where I was like, <laughs> I'm so awesome, and I could just skip past level one and move into <laughs> level two. You know, it's, it's very Drake what I was doing right hey, there. Hey, you you gotta have an ego, man. You gotta yeah. shoot for the stars. You know what I mean? In this business, kid, you gotta go for the top. You can't be sitting on a couch like a fucking, you know, just wait, wishing. Wait, what? <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> that came across. Are we are we talking? Are we weird. are we talking about who the who the who the cheerleader and motivator in this in this duo is? <laughs> no, I was just by like, by the way. I was going on like a football player. Fucking while we're waiting right for there. for Dante to to Skype in, well, um, I gotta turn my Skype back on. Kind of shut it down and see if that was the problem. Oh, well, I told him to Skype in. You. F- 
fuckhead. I know. Well, right. now I'm online, so. Anyway, um, we will be uh, uh, basically auditioning for a new female co-host on this show because uh, we have lost the great Kristen Wood for good. She is gone. Yeah, I think so. She is gone. Is she, now, is she going to move up to Tahoe, do you think, or is she going to stay down Well, uh, we can't talk about it yet. Oh. <laughs> um, hey, you viewers, keep your mouth well, shut. It's not like she told me not to... You know, not right. to say anything, but I don't know if she wants us to blast it out there yet, but uh, make a long story short, Kristen is going to be uh, moving on. Moving on. But she didn't even mention about, you know, um, keeping to come here. I'm just assuming at this point because she's going to be very busy. Well, yeah, she was already gone. She was already so, busy, like, yeah, yeah, so. Like, it's been... What probably about four podcasts since we've had her? Something in here? like that, yeah. No, I mean not that we've even been consistent. Yeah, wow. But um, I would really like to get her back on at well, least one is, more, she's awesome. she's one awesome. more time. You know, just to kind of say goodbye to her vagina. Yay! I'll have to I'll have to see if I can <laughs> pull some new vagina in here. Okay, here comes Dante. Let's hey, see if, can, see if we can do this. What's up, man? What's up? What's up, buddy? How are you? Good, good. Um, been having some technical issues, but uh, can you hear us all right, Dante? Uh, oh, I can there? see him. Yay! You can see him, but he can't see us though. Oh, so if I pull my dick out, he's just gonna be completely clueless. Yeah, I'll have to slap it against the mic <laughs> so he can hear it. Can Can you hear us, Dante? Yeah. Okay, you. cool. You're probably going to have a big delay if you're watching it on the site and shit. That's all right, man. Okay. But I think that's the only way I can hear you is if I put you up on the site. Okay, cool. So uh, what's... Oh, what's what, what, oh, yeah, man. Thanks a lot for having us. Um, yeah, this is kind of like um, the, the starting ground to what we can do with this podcast. You know what I mean? Like, we can have people come in, yeah. call in... I can um, eventually. I'll have like multiple people on and shit from different areas around the country. I'd like to kind of stick with comedians and stuff, and you know, have people talk about like uh, um, the gigs that they're working, and you know, the type of clubs and whatnot that they're at, and promoters and whatnot. You know what I mean? Just kind of give people like a um, a perspective of, of what like a, a working comedian out there is doing. So, right on, man. Yeah. What are you drinking there out of the red cup? The red cup looks like uh, something, something thirsty and cold and delicious. <laughs> it's just monster, man. I, I wish it was better than that. It's just monster. Just monster, huh? He's like fuck yeah. cans. <laughs> I like my monster in a red cup. Oh man, Chelsea just said Dante. Where's she at on Facebook? Yeah, uh, I think so. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And it also says "nice rug burn on Wayne's knee." <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's from improv class, actually. What? I believe it happened when I was when I was being a squirrel in an improv exercise. You guys play Black Ops? Oh yeah, I'm. I'm a he does. I, I'm, a, I'm a dork man. I'm in a. I'm in the. I'm a caveman. I still rock the PS2 because I'm poor. I'm a dork man since I was a kid. I play Battlefield. Oh, I've been rocking some Silent Hill Three. That's what I've been rocking. Really? Yeah. I think it's time for an upgrade, yeah. bud. <laughs> <laughs> I like just got another Xbox and shit, like so I'm just kinda getting back into it. Geeking out. I got a like a custom PC. I'm a huge dork Don. <laughs> I'm a fucking I got a I'm a video production and uh video game dork, you know? And and yeah, I just got into comedy. Bad. What's that? Nothing wrong with that, man. Yeah, if you're ever on Call of Duty Black Ops, I go by Dante the Comic, I will kill you. Oh, yeah? Are you on the Xbox? I'm on PS3. Oh, see. You can't you can't cross with those? No, no. I think we can. No. Microsoft and uh, Sony do not get along. 
Yeah, I thought maybe with the with the gaming software itself, though, you might be able to hop in on no, different no, consoles. I don't no? think so. No. Hmm. Get with the times well, here, okay. Wayne. Uh, coming to you guys live from uh, the hotel. Yeah. We at the Silver Legacy. What? What? Yeah, you're going to be at the Catch Rising Star for the next couple of days, right? Exactly. Yeah, me and uh, my girlfriend Rebecca, who's a very funny comedian and probably the hottest, well, not only like comedian, but chick I've ever seen. That's she awesome. She is an opening act, and she's funny, thank God. She is funny. I've Hot seen her. And funny. I saw her last year. Oddly enough, uh, you guys were here like October last year. And um, it was during uh, a conference that Chelsea was doing, and it just so happens that the conference is going on the same week that you're here, even though it's in two entirely different weeks. It just happened to fall during the 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 Naba conference that my wife is involved with. Oh yeah, I remember. I remember. It's also uh, Biker Week this week too. Oh yeah, yeah, Street Vibrations, or as I call it, What Week, because it's like. You try to have a conversation with somebody and like, yeah, so I was going to go down to the... Yeah. What? <laughs> I hate... You know, if I rode, I would enjoy street vibrations, I guess. But All right. I, you I, just said, let Dante talk. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who said that, Chelsea? Fucking Chelsea. Critiquing our podcast from the sidelines. I know. We suck. <laughs> we do suck, though, so... But yeah, no. Let's uh, let's let let's let Dante plug some shit for a while. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> no man, he's got cool stuff going on. Oh, I yeah, actually no, want to hear I about totally, it. I totally, so. totally agree. What do you what do you got um, going on, I don't Dante? Know, too. Uh, uh, I have a podcast. Yeah, let's hear. It. Is it on iTunes and shit? Is it on iTunes? Yeah, yeah it's on iTunes. It's called the Stimulus Package. Uh, with Dante and Rebecca, and nice. it's hosted by me and Rebecca and my best friend, who's also a comedian named Anthony Ramos, and uh, we do it live every Monday and Tuesday night from uh, the John Lovitz Comedy Club in nice. Universal Studios. Very cool. And we have a lot of big guests on, and sometimes it gets crazy in there, and sometimes you know you find out shit about people that you'd never ever guess. Uh, but yeah, it's fun. It's really fun, and it's it's actually really popular. I guess we're if you go to like iTunes right now, we're in that new and noteworthy, and I think we're in like the top two hundred podcasts. Very Crazy. cool. That's awesome. Very How cool. is that comedy club? Uh, the um the John Lovitz Club. I see it on online all the time, but I've never uh, been there. But I hear great things about it. Dude. Great, it's great. It's uh, it used to be a BB King, so it's three levels. It has like two wow. giant balconies above oh, you. Oh wow! Um, I actually have a show there October twelfth. People need to come out too. It's called Dante and Friends. I do a couple of those a year there, and it's usually big name comics and a couple of local LA comics that we like to you know just hook up on the show. But yeah, it's great. It's great. It's a great club. It, it's actually my favorite club, and I. I've been, you know, doing the LA comedy scene for like 26 years, so Jesus. that would to be my favorite. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I'd like to get down Sorry. there eventually, man. Hit hit up the Ice House and, uh, you know, Comedy Store, Laugh Factory, all those. What I like about LA and like San Francisco is you can work a lot, you know, or you know, you, there's a lot of stage time you can get anyway. You know what I mean? Like, if you're a an up and coming comic, like if you bust your ass, you can perform right. every night. You know, that's what I I really like about the Bay Area. Exactly. Dante, how long have you been doing comedy? Twenty six years. Uh, twenty six years, man. In November, it'll be twenty six years. Did you start yeah. in L.A.? Say what? Did you start in L.A.? No, I started in San Diego. I started there in 86. And, um, yeah, I started at a great time, man. I started at a time where, like, opening acts, we were paid, like, $300 to be the opener. People Jeez, that would be awesome. Crazy. I know, it was crazy. Um, and I started with a lot of good people. I mean, I mean, there were already some people that were, you know, already celebrities. But, you know, a lot of people I came up with, 
you know, have gone on to bigger and better things. Like yeah. I went to college with Jamie Foxx back when he was known as Eric Bishop and he came up to me and it was like, how do I do stand up? And so I kind of like helped him out and gave him part of my time at the comedy store and told them that they should, you know, give him a chance. And they did. And now he's Jamie Foxx. Well, that's crazy. Like, yeah. But a lot of like even the doorman that I used to work with, I remember at one point it was me, Carlos Mencia and Eddie Griffin were the three doormen at the comedy store. Wow. That's cool. That's crazy. Yeah. Doesn't Jamie Foxx have like a degree in uh in classical piano or something? Um, you know what? He actually has he's the one who he got a, a scholarship to our college and his scholarship was actually music. I got a scholarship for acting. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. I think we mentioned it before we brought you on, but just in case anybody just hopped in, you uh, were a finalist, right, in season five of Last Comic Standing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Among other things. I mean, you've got a resume that I don't even want to try to go into because it's a lot. But uh, Way more than yours, Wayne. Oh, dude. <laughs> that's, that's a given. Yeah, dude, I, know, I know every comic has different opinions about Last Comic Standing, but here's why I like it. Here's why I like any show that promotes comedians because there aren't enough. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like in the old days, you had Johnny Carson. You had HBO specials up the ass. Even Comedy Central, you know, specials were were there were more of them, and the channel itself promoted comedians. And now we're we're living in a time where there's no star maker for a comic except maybe an HBO special, really. Because yeah, uh, Last Comic Standing was was close to that. It wasn't a huge star maker, but it put people on the map and a lot of them who'd done it a long time who you know had done a million shows but they weren't the right shows for the general public to you know finally go wow i'm on board now i get that i get that they're funny you know um before that i mean you know before last comic standing tons of people didn't know ralphie may yeah they didn't know um like doug benson or lavelle crawford or me or you know, and yet we had all done a million TV shows and movies and everything else, but it, it really, really helped. Um, you know, like we were watching, me and Rebecca were watching America's Got Talent, and Tom Cotter came in second. Dude, that guy and killed, that, man. He was awesome. He killed, but I just looked at it like, you know what? If, if he didn't get on there, no one would know him. Yeah. He's been around probably the same amount of time I have. See, now, were you impressed by his kind of gimmick that he chose because i really liked it because if you don't know comedy it looks like it's difficult but i i imagine that he just had his own bits you know what i mean but it looked like it was all off the cuff yeah well that's the thing i mean that was a great trick yeah yeah it was great some trick because i mean if Throw i went the f- through and sectioned off all my material and said all right this is going to be relationships this is yeah be this it's not like the judges said all right you know, let me pick a subject. Is yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? He had six subjects on a die. Yeah. I'm sure he's Which he's been doing for years, I bet. You know what I mean? Right. And he picked those six subjects. Yeah. Not like, yeah. you know. Didn't he just do that on, uh, on on America's Got Talent? I, didn't I see something similar to that? Yeah. That's what we're talking about, yeah, Wayne. Would you get in a fucking conversation? Sorry. I thought you were still talking about the other thing. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Man. I thought you were talking about. I thought he did it on last comic standing. I, I'm, I'm no, no, no. My bad. Yeah, Tom Cotter. I think auditioned for season four, but didn't make it. Um, you know, he made it to like the semis or something, but didn't make it. Um, but yeah, it gave him a lot of you know publicity, and I'm sure that he's in a a much higher uh, pay bracket. I yeah. think that's one thing that happens to comics too. You get on last comic standing, and it opens doors and your money goes up. Definitely. You know? Now, yeah, instead of calling up and being like, hey, my name's Joe Smith. I'd love to get booked there. They're like, well, here's the process. You call up and it's like, hey, it's Dante from Last Comic Standing. They're like, okay, we'll put you through the booker. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that part's good for comedy. And it's like I've had my own fame over the years. Like, you know, in the early 90s, I was on a million shows and I'd done America's uh, Funniest people which uh, i remember that with dave coulier 
Coulier. With Dave Coulier. That's right. I, I actually won it. I won the grand prize on there. Um, and then also in the 90s, I was the first white guy on BET's Comic View and ended up like being on, I must have done probably 20 stand-up sets. And what's crazy about that is I was under 10 years. So I would, I was having to come up with new material every year yeah. because I was yeah. going to do another episode of, of Comic View. And then they also um, had an award show and I ended up winning the most BET awards. That's then, awesome. Uh, yeah, it's crazy, right? And then I, I, I uh, got a sitcom on there for two years. So I had a lot of black fame. Like I was at the point where they would fly me into black venues around the country for one night for about three times what I make in a week at a, a comedy club now with a comic fame. And I would do one show a month, and that's all I had to do. I mean, wow. I'd do more than that, obviously. Wow. But, but you know, they'd pick you up in a limo and, you know, whatever. But it was also kind of strange and weird to do, like, a lot of black venues, there's a problem. Most of them were great. But one out of every, like, ten venues, it was some jackass promoter who had never done it but thought, you know, if he books some famous, you know, black comedian yeah. himself, if you book them, they will come. Money. Right. And then he would like screw us out of our money. So like one out of every 10 times I was screwed. And then and also, you know, this was also the nineties when like, you know, gangster rap and stuff like that was really popular. And even white kids in the suburbs wanted to pretend like they were gangsters. So there were, you know, one out of every, that like, was me. Shows. Yeah, that was you. One out of every eight shows at a black, Room, there would be a fight or a gun pulled or something stupid would happen and eventually I was just like I just can't do these all the time I need to like regroup so, so you had I to break like, up with the blacks no I didn't break up <laughs> I'm just kidding I knew that I had to give up something I knew yeah. that I, I had to give up some of that fame and stop doing comic view and I also got like disappointed with comic view because they went through a few seasons where if a comic had a joke or two that wasn't really working, they would um, put crickets in, the sound of crickets. Really? Yeah, and it was really offensive to me. And oh, like, yeah. When, when I was just like, yeah, I'm not going to do comic view anymore. Like, I'm done now. I don't like them disrespecting comics. Oh, yeah. Because everyone has a flop here and there, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're just, because, you know, it's going to cost you money eventually. Like some some right. promoters are gonna see that and say, oh, I'm not fucking booking that guy. Exactly. You know? Yeah, and some of these guys were great, and I mean, uh, he, I, uh, even Last Comic Standing does that. Sometimes it's it's faked, you know, like they can fake it in editing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know how they always have that audition retard reel? They're yeah. Like, and here's the bad one. And you'd see a few guys that you knew were super strong headliners, but maybe they did an impression of like a bird sound, and that's the only thing they use. So you just see this great comic going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You're like, right. you great comedian. Why would you do that to him? Um, but on the other uh, side of that, like, uh, what's his name? Uh, he was on the last season that they did, which was like season, season seven. Um, Dat Fan. Yeah, Dat Fan. No. Uh, huh? uh, uh, name. Uh, anyway, he's a comic. He's was, it, was it was it Dat Fan? Um, <laughs> he, do you want? I'll slap him for you, Dante. If you want, I'm, I have no qualms about smacking him. Oh no, it was Guy Tory. Guy Tory. Oh yeah. My money was on him to win the whole thing because I've worked with Guy Tory for almost twenty years, and when he went up on stage, he was having a bad set to where the crowd was actually booing. Wow. Ouch. And, judges had to talk to him afterwards they were uncomfortable because they knew who he was and, and they even said that they're like dude we know who you are you're great like you know i i you just had a bad set and it was just really uncomfortable so that's, that's yeah the they yeah. didn't fake the editing i mean that was just a bad set even then sadly the next comic who auditioned after him at the semis made his first joke about guy tory you Ooh. Know? ouch Guy Tory is like a pretty ripped black guy, right? Is that the guy I'm thinking of? I don't think he's ripped. No, no, but he's uh, he he's been brother, around for a while though. Yeah, he and his brother both have fame. They're yeah, both comedians. his brother Joe. His brother Joe was in Tales from the Hood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah, maybe yeah, that's yeah. what I'm thinking of. He was like of. the star of that. Plus, he was the star of like a lot of black movies. I yeah. don't know which one. One of my favorite guys that come out of Last Comic Standing was Alonzo Bowden. That guy's fucking awesome. Did you say Dante? No, uh, and Dante, and Dante, <laughs> and Dad Fan, <laughs> and Dad Fan. Yeah, Alonzo dude is great. I've known Alonzo um, also for about twenty years. When I first moved to LA, there was this lady. She ran a, a shitty room for no pay inside of a hotel um, by the LAX airport. Um, great neighborhood. Bar, yeah, and like half the people didn't speak English, and there'd be like sixteen people there. And it was me and Alonzo and like 10 other guys. And we did it weekly. But here's why we did it mainly. We liked her, but what we got paid was a free buffet every Tuesday. Nice. Yeah, we couldn't wait, man. Like, we were so broke. We were broke comics. Like, we would fill up our plates. We would gorge ourselves just to, like, you know, better than the ramen we were eating. Oh, yeah. For sure. Um, but yeah, he's a great comic and he's actually the one, he was a judge my year on last comic. Oh, that's nice. And I, yeah. And I, well, I had had him like talk to him about last comic even before I knew he was going to be a judge. And I said, dude, what do you think is the key? Because you made it on there and he yeah. goes, he gave me great advice. <laughs> he goes, the reason the DAT fans and people, some of the newer comics make it he goes, it's because they're used to seven-minute sets where they get out, like, 20 jokes in seven minutes. Right. He goes, most headliners, we're used to doing, like, an hour and a half. Yeah. And we're not used to, like, punch, 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 punch. But he goes, it's TV. So he's, he was like, just go through your act, man, and figure out, you know, even in a long story, how you can condense that one story from, like, five minutes down to maybe 20 seconds. Yeah. Yeah, I've noticed that because I, I just I started like I met I made the big transition from from feature to to headliner for Tribble, so I'm out you know headlining Butte Montana and shit like that. So I've been doing the longer sets, and then I go to do like a five minute guest spot somewhere, and it's like hard for me now because like I, I I'm used to having to to be able to take a few minutes to get settled and get a good momentum going and. Yeah, exactly. And well, that's also what's, uh, and by the way, real quick, before I get to this point, I want to do a shout out to Dave Tribble. Like a lot of people listening to this may not know who he is, but he's one of the nicest men in show business. And he, he, he runs what's notoriously known as the comics, like first run as a headliner. And it's, it's, it's not great pay when you first start out. I mean, I'm at a different level with Dave. He booked me at, at good stuff. At but, jokers and stuff. You know, yeah. I've seen you know, that. He does. He he is like one of the main people who provides legs for comics to get their headlining, you know, shit together. Absolutely. And, I mean, if he was doing something wrong, he wouldn't still be here after all this time, you know. You know. Right. And he's just a really nice guy. But the the point I was going to make is is here in Reno, I love this club and I love you know, whatever. But the tough part is is when we first started working here, they would have an MC open for us. Now it's like Rebecca has to follow the piano player and everyone yeah. in the music. And then she comes up and it's like, Hey, let me tell you some jokes. So it's like, yeah, it's a very do. hard transition. You it's almost, hard. you have to acknowledge it. You can't just ignore it. Like I've only been there twice. And the, the every time I've had to just come up right after, like I'd never felt confident. I'd always try and make it like a, I rattle off some joke, and it's just not like a great start to your set, you know. Do tell a talented, I'll give him that. Like, oh, he's great. I I love the. There's two different piano players, and I love them both. But you know, I'm sure that Catch could get even a free MC every night. Well, oh, yeah. maybe Sorry. somebody with the juice that you have could have that conversation with the person that you would know that you would need to have that conversation with. Because she has um, been very um, anti having locals in there, like she doesn't like doing yeah. guest sets at all, or she she's just she looks like all of us local Reno comics are all riffraff. Well, most of you guys yeah. are, except me. I'm pretty fucking awesome, but um, no, I'm Eat just a kidding. Dick. <laughs> Eat a dick. <laughs> Do you guys still have that Wednesday night? comedy room i do yeah 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 wayne runs that still 
block. Where is it? It's like a it's like a block from my hotel, right? Exactly. It's, like it's right next to the El Dorado parking garage. garage. Yeah. Is it called Third Street? Yeah. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always come out for that, man. I always check out the comics. You guys have a good scene here. I think comics here are fun. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. It's uh, we've lost. It's kind of like a football team. Like we've lost a lot of really good players since the last time you were here, and we're kind of rebuilding right now. But uh, it, you know, it, the thing is, is is it will rebuild. I mean, and we we do have some. St- we still st- have some talented people around here, and. And uh, you know it'll recover. We just lost we lost a couple of our best guys, so it's been it's been uh, it's been hard oh, for well. me to watch. But you know what? The way I look at that is, I yeah. I mean, good good. I I I mean, I don't. I, I, if they died, sorry, but I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> they, I went somewhere else. Yeah, they're so they're doing better stuff. Really, I'm happy for them. The, the key to any town that you start in, like when I started in San Diego, my goal was not. To just become a paid comic and stuff because that sort of happened for me right away my goal was to be the best guy in town if i wasn't i wasn't going to move to la yeah. so the minute i like started passing up all these guys that used to like not even let in their conversation because they were these headliners in san diego the minute i realized that people were calling me for their gigs and i was you know beating them at every comedy contest that's when i knew it was time to leave so when good guys leave, that's great. That just who's going to be the next big fish? That's that's how I look at it. That would be me, huh, Wayne? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, uh, I just, uh, I have, I have a, a huge ego. I've got two more years left in Reno until Chelsea finishes up her degree, and then uh, then it's a it's time to start looking at new cities. So that'll be exciting. And, but here's, I'll, I'll give you this piece of advice to any comic listening. You don't have to be in L.A. to be a working comic. Yeah. You have to no. play a credit. You know what I mean? Like, like I actually look at some of these guys who live in the Midwest, and I'm looking at the map, and I'm like, man, these guys can hit up, like, 40 different clubs and do road gigs and never drive more than, like, eight hours. Yeah. Like, yeah. play a week at these places, and they can make a full living at it. Like, that's prime, but, yeah. you know, me and yeah. Rebecca were both actors and both want the stand-up TV <laughs> credits and everything else, so we have to be in L.A., which is sucks, and this is the part people forget, you know, the, the cost of living in L.A. as compared to, like, if you live in Tulsa, Oklahoma, you can probably rent an apartment for, like, four or five hundred bucks in Tulsa. Yeah. In L.A., a studio apartment that in a shitty neighborhood starts at a $1,000. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I, li- I lived in ho- in Hollywood for a little while in my early early twenties, you know. But is Rebecca dying? I Please hear don't so, die, I hear Rebecca. a coffin. <laughs> no, she's uh, not dying. I'm. Can I show you real quick, honey? She's All smoking right, really? a bowl. Is that what's she's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, don't show me anymore, Dante. <laughs> That's funny. That's an entirely different podcast. Yeah. yeah. Also takes place in the hotel room. In Reno. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny. There's this guy. Uh, what's his name? Um, what's our friend's name who was on Celebrity Rehab? I mean, um, the drummer. He's also a comic. He was drummer for Skid Row. Tom uh, Sizemore. Tom, yeah, Tom Sizemore. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> no, he's such a dipshit. Uh, uh, his name is uh, Phil Verone. Yeah. Was Phil was from our first Skid Row, and then he got into stand-up, and then he got on that Dr. Drew show, and then I was looking him up the other day, and now he runs a porn site called the Phil Verone Road Sex Tapes. Nice. It's like having sex with like 20 women. Crazy. Fabulous. Crazy career, man. Fabulous. Hey, Dante, do you know uh, Chris D'Elia? In L.A.? Uh, yeah. Uh, We're not much. Like, I don't call him, but I, I, I ran a room in L.A. for like 10 years that almost every new comic either started at or played 2,000 times. I I was a, I was becoming a fan of Chris D'Elia just from watching stuff on the YouTube channel and whatnot. Right. And, uh, you know, with all my buddies, I crack little jokes about them being gay or whatnot. You know, just to fuck around, bust their balls. 
and uh, I, I, he had posted this picture on Facebook, right? Right. And he, uh-huh. it was like an uh, audition type of picture, you know, trying to look real sexy, right? So I did a comment. I was like, hella gay, bro. Just fucking around. And he yeah. totally, like, got pissed, and he totally, like, fucking blocked me. He was like, don't <laughs> do not do this ever. You know, he's like, fuck you. You can't be my fan no more. I was like, damn, man. He doesn't want any negativity in his life at all. You know but I, I was just wondering, like, if you knew him, like, if you could be like, hey, man, this guy, Drake, he was just busting your balls. He didn't really mean it. <laughs> so unblock him on Facebook. Yeah, who cares, really? Like, I know, but... You know. I'm shocked, and, and I hate to say it because I actually like him and Whitney very much, but I'm shocked that that show's even on the air. It is per if ick. I've never even seen it. I've heard. I, I've it. seen it. Honestly, the uh, the sh- other show that she produces, the two broke girls, I like that. That's like my guilty pleasure That's show. What everyone says. Everyone says that one's good, but I don't get like even the promos for her show. You know, like every couple ends up in sweatpants. Like I was like, how is that funny? Yeah. Like I don't. I don't know. And I just feel like I think I'm more frustrated because I have been a fan of hers since she was an open micer. Mm-hmm. And I think that she's better than her own show, if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, do she's you, without a doubt funny. No. Do you think it's just. You know uh, what, go ahead. They were both open micers until she got on the roast. And he was an open micer until she kind of put him on the show. Now, does that mean that they were brand new? No, not at all. I actually thought they were both really good comics, but they weren't like, you know, look, search the internet. They weren't grinding. They weren't grinding. Like, look to see if they were playing anywhere before, you know, whatever, 2008. And yeah. you won't find that they were playing anywhere. But, you know, as soon as she did the roast, her career started taking off. And then she pulled him up because he was always at my open mics, you know, same time she was. And, they're a good team, and I'm glad that they're both famous. That's what I'm but waiting for one of my friends to make it to pull me up. God damn it. <laughs> you can yeah, be my limo like driver, car. Wayne. I'm going to need a limo driver. <laughs> yeah, the only be. problem with that, dude, is sometimes you, your best friends turn on you when you give them shit. Oh, yeah, for sure. I've, I've had it happen already. but Yeah, it's crazy. Not for me, though. Like, I, I helped one guy get on a TV show, and now we're not friends because whatever. And I helped another guy uh, get a high-paying industry job, and he turned on me right away. And he even, you know, what his thing he said to me was, he goes, you know, I don't want you involved in this anymore because uh, you have everything, and I had nothing, and I want something that's all mine. And was Jeez. basically ready to break up a friendship because I had given him everything he had ever wanted in his life, and now he didn't need me. Yeah, that's fucking weird when that happens. Crazy, right? You know what I mean, like. It's like you think you know people, and then they just want well, to flip a flip the switch on you. Yeah, you know? these aren't even like social friends. These were like best friends. Yeah, like, yeah, it's crazy. Friends. That's unfortunate. It sucks too, because it, yeah. it always you know you base your your future relationships on shit that's happened in the past. So it's like then you become real hesitant sometimes, you know, to want to help somebody or whatever. You know, I've been hurt a lot and. And stabbed in the back, but, you know, like, I don't help people that I don't, like, you really gotta get to know me before I start going out of my way to help you out now, you know what I mean? Right. Well, see, I don't care about helping people out. I just don't ever put an expectation on them anymore. Yeah. You know? I just, I just don't, because I've been burned by my two best friends. Because the reality is, it feels nice to be nice to people. So, like, if you're gonna let people quit you know, making you quit being nice to people, that's, that, that's, that's fucked up. Well, I think one of my heroes, as far as movies go, is Adam Sandler. I just like his career. I like how he has his own company and all that stuff. But one of the main reasons I like him is, look at his company. He's always producing stuff for his friends, or yeah. any movie he ever has out. It's almost always the same people. Even yeah. his friends that are famous, he's made famous. You know, the guy with the lazy eye who's in every movie. The guy who always plays the best friend in every movie. Steve Buscemi. Uh, yeah, Steve Buscemi. <laughs> <laughs> really, it's Steve a stupid Buscemi, game he's, he's I like play. put in a lot of shit. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, w- I would love to be a friend of Adam Sandler's, man. It's like I would, I would be, I'd be working all the time. Did you see Funny People? I really liked that movie. I really enjoyed that movie as well, yeah. 
Yeah, I liked it too. I think the only thing that I heard from other comics that they didn't like was it was like they felt like it was two movies. It started off as a stand-up movie and then became a love story movie and the two didn't mix, yeah. but I liked it. That's the thing. Yeah, you, you, you know how it is, Dante. Like, you have to appeal to the suits. You know what I mean? Like, if it's Absolutely. all comedy, yeah, all comedians are going to love it, but, you know, they have to be, you know, they have to make their money back. It can't be 100%. You know, comedy. Got to get the the wet vaginas in the theater. Right. <laughs> yeah, but he's really funny, man. And I, yeah. I was running a room at the Improv and with Rebecca, and he, I guess, had called and asked if he could film some of his stuff on our show for that movie. So the stuff that you know you see at the Improv that was from our night. Really. Was, really. Oh wow. Yeah, it was kind of cool. Oh, wow. And they actually cut out some great jokes. Like, he had this one joke where he was talking about, you know, when you're rich, um, you have other people handle your money. When you're poor, you take good care of your money. Yeah. You know exactly what yeah. you have. And he was like, you know, I feel like my money probably hates me now. They're like, you used to, like, keep us in your sock and take us bike riding with you. And he's like, no, it's like, just, you hand us over to some Jew, hands us over to another Jew. But, uh, he goes... He goes, I bet you Rob Schneider would take good care of us. <laughs> That's awesome. That's funny. That's awesome. Hilarious. Hey, uh, completely uh, different, but um, you, you've obviously been doing this stuff a long time, and uh, the uh, only class I've ever paid for, other than the improv class I'm taking now, um, as far as being in comedy, is the uh, comedy uh, business workshop that you have. Are you going to be doing that again? I would love to, but here's my problem. Like, it's a new manager um, who I haven't even met yet, but I understand he's a comic. I just want to make sure he's cool a good dude. Stupid. Yeah, that's what I, I've, I've gathered. And I was also happy to find out he was on a suit, that he was a, an actual stand up comic. So if he would give me like Saturday day or Sunday day at the club, I would love to do it because I think it's important. I feel like it's cheap enough to where I'm not ripping off comics, but they're getting good info out of it. I hope you did. I mean, I don't know. For I sure. Actually, I always feel like it's a good like revamp even for myself just to repeat these things because here's what that is. It's, it's just like, here's the problem with most comics. Most comics look at their show and they go, I'm the show, man. I don't need to fucking promote that. The club does that. I come in and I do a show. Yeah. And yeah. my basis of all of this is that it's show business that, you know, I have, literally for 26 years never had to have a day job i have been a working comic because i understood that it was a business and and you know especially now that we have the internet and stuff if you don't self-promote and build up your own fan base you're useless i mean you know what i mean because here's the truth about what clubs want they only want asses in seats and drink sold yeah if you're funny that's a bonus it really is but like Think of whoever's the worst Reno comic. Don't even say his name. But if he goes to, let's say he goes to Catch a Rising Star and sells out every single show, has high drink sales, and has shitty sets, and I'm there, let's say, this week, but I don't quite sell out every show and my drink sales are lower than his, he'll get a rebooking quicker than I will. Yeah. I promise you. Because it's business. Yeah. You know? I mean... You guys, uh, I'm sure, book rooms and shit, and I'm sure that there's comics who maybe aren't even the best ones in town, but you know that every time they come, they bring like eight people or have fans or whatever, and you're more apt to book them than you are someone who's, you know, not going to help you pack a show. My friends are already over seeing me do comedy, you know what I mean? Like they're, They'll be like, are you doing new shit? Uh, no, not really. Um, then yeah, I'm going to pass. <laughs> I'll catch the next one. Hilarious. Yeah, yeah. And all my funny. friends now, the only, the only friends that I really have anymore are all comics. You know, like I've, I don't really have touch, and I'm not really in touch with anybody that I was friends with before I started doing comedy Well, you anymore. still know all those drug dealers too, right? I do, I do. All right. Well, let's let's touch on that. You you guys are talking friends. I'm actually let's go back to the business of show, yeah. which is forget your friends. Yeah. Let's build up your fan base. Why don't you have you know five thousand Facebook friends and maybe ten different Facebook pa 
pages. Because Dante the comic up. won't like my Facebook page, that douchebag. <laughs> I already did. It's, it's, you're already liked by me. Wayne Walsh but, comedy? Wait, huh? Wayne Walsh comedy? Uh, no. Send me a link to that. I, I, I like <laughs> Chelsea, him. send him a link to that, please. Yeah. He has to have yeah, his manager yeah. handle that but stuff. I don't like it, but I'm just saying. Like, I'm just fucking with you. About, it's not about calling out your friends. It's about building up a fan base <clears throat> to where when you show up, the, the club knows yeah. that you're not inviting friends. You're you're popular enough without it. Like there's you know there's comics out there who don't have one TV credit, not one, but they will fill up places all over the country because. At the time, maybe they had a hundred thousand MySpace people. Maybe now they have, uh, you know, I, I don't know. It, it's just you have to build up your own base. It, we're actually we're actually uh, working on that right now. We are uh, we've been working really hard on on uh, web content and trying to build a following uh, that way. That one video link that I sent you, I don't know if you watched it, but that's the first project that we finished. We have a lot of stuff that's half finished that's not that's not ready yet, but that was the first thing that we actually had, you know, shot, cut, ready to go. So and that was the f- commercial for this well, podcast. Well, it's great. And, you know, you should be – here's the thing. Like with YouTube, you should film every set because you never know – even if it's the exact same shit and you put it up on YouTube, you never know which one's going to get popular and why. Yeah. You know, maybe some, some lady heckled you and all of a sudden that one little heckle in the crowd makes yours hit a million views. Yeah. And if you have a million views on um, YouTube, uh, you tell a comedy club that and they'll book you immediately. That's uh, Look at Angela Johnson. She had one bit. She wasn't famous. But she did that like nail salon bit where she's doing an Asian lady, and next thing you know, she had like two million hits, and all of a sudden she was headlining all over the country and had bodyguards. Jesus, that's insane. Yeah, that's I try crazy. and film a lot of shit, and uh, and even if it's total crap, I put it on there just to kind of do like a progression of you know when I started and where I'm going. You know what I mean? It might cost, I was talking about it to, with Wayne earlier. I'm sure it might cost me some bookings later on down the line because I'm putting shit online, uh, as well as good stuff. But I put as much on there as I can. Yeah, I think it's valuable. I think I I don't know, man. I think especially if you have the weird shows where you are yelling at someone or whatever, or there's a certain bit you know people love. It's just, I mean, the more shit of you out there, the better, because people find you in the weirdest places. Yeah. Like, you know, I have a website, and, and these fucking bookers, man, they'll put up a picture that they found who knows where, and it'll be like me sitting there having a burger with a friend. I don't know where they got the goddamn picture or why they decided to use that, you know? So the more shit you have out there yeah. yourself, the easier people are going to find you. Like, this podcast yeah, I, will get on YouTube when it's done. Exactly. And I'd love to, you know, have you guys call into my podcast or if you're in L.A. Anytime, man. Yeah, hey, I'm have you gotten here. to meet my uh, my buddy uh, Jason Wrestler yet? How, do you know him? I don't know. Definitely. Really funny dude. He moved down to L.A. recently. He's been in Sacramento for years and yeah, one, of, one, one of my better friends. Him. Yeah, give it to him. Not over the air. But. <laughs> yeah, I will. <laughs> over the air? No, I'm saying I'll I'll I'll, I'll pass your number on to him. That's really, good. he's and he's like a 20 year vet probably, too. You guys, uh, call me after we do this because yeah, I'd like to do the workshop, but you guys know the the Reno comics. I don't have a right, a, you know, right. some sort of database to contact them. So maybe we'll do that. And, uh, yeah, for sure. Are you, you gonna come out? You gonna try and make it to uh, Wednesday night show, the comedy at at Third Street? I want to, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Call me about that, too. I definitely want to. Cool. I'll plug the hell out of that. Maybe we'll get some new bodies down there. <laughs> Sounds good, man. Yeah. And if I do do the seminar, you guys get in free. Cause Sweet. Oh, I'd love to, yeah, do the refresher. That'd be great. Yeah, do a refresher on it. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, I wanted to mention to all the people listening to this, either live right now or, or later, um, go to iTunes. Here's what I need. I need people to rate and comment. And I said, rate, not rate. Rate and comment. Oh, God damn it. I was all like, yes, I'm doing that right now. (laughs) (laughs) 
wait and comment stimulus package with Dante and Rebecca um, because for whatever reason, every time someone does, we move up in rank. So just don't don't rate it less than five stars. Don't <laughs> you. But it, it's a great show. If you guys haven't listened to it yet, it really is fucking great. And we have a lot of good comics on. And we'll have, like, big actors on yeah. um, or whoever, just weird <sighs> celebrities. Like, we had Victoria Jackson on last week. Nice. You know her from Saturday Night Live. And we're a real liberal show, and she's a, a staunch, like, Republican. Oh, yeah, I remember fan. that. I remember seeing her on yeah. something that. Yeah, and so, like, we were debating her because she was like, well, why are you liberal? And we're like, and my Rebecca goes, because we believe in civil rights. <laughs> because I f- because I finished high school. <laughs> yeah. So that's all. I mean, it's just it's it's a good show, and I I just I don't know. I, yeah. I think people. Oh yeah. And I'll I'll definitely promote you guys too. Fabulous. Yeah, we appreciate man. it. Well, why don't we uh, wrap this up? We've been going about an hour or so, so uh, yeah, we, good, usually, uh, oh. we usually uh we usually uh send out some. Some plugs or some shows we got coming up. You got anything else to plug, Dante? Um, I'll be tonight through Catch a Rising Sunday. Star. Star is at the Silver Legacy. Um, and then in uh, October, I have a room at the Rolling Stone. It's at Hollywood and Highland. Every Wednesday, people need to come out to. And then October twelfth at. Uh, the John Lovitz Comedy Club, and then I'm also going to become a staff writer for Fashion Police for Joan Rivers starting in November. Awesome. So kind of, yeah, that's nice because I can still be on the road. But uh, other than that, man, oh, just, uh, uh, on almost everything, I'm Dante the Comic, so like Facebook, okay. Twitter, and then for, you know, if people want to check out the podcast, go to either the GoCast Network and look up Stimulus Package or iTunes, look up Stim- Stimulus Package. And hopefully I'll get to see both of you guys this week, right? And, and definitely Wednesday. Let's make that happen. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. What about you, Wayne? You got anything coming up? Um, I will be at 3rd Street this week. Um, I was going to get lazy and have somebody else host for me, but then I realized Dante <laughs> was going to be in town. So, uh, no, I'll definitely be there. Um Let's see. I don't I don't think I have anything else this week. I'm just I'm kind of doing the, the improv thing. I'm real excited about that doing the the improv workshop through empire improv it's a lot of fun so anybody that wants to get into improv i you know it's a good place to start that's so, awesome dude. Oh, yeah. yeah they empire improv i won't be performing in it but they have shows uh every friday night at the good luck macbeth theater and they're very good friends of mine so check that out if you get a chance awesome i'm gonna be at uh i'll probably come down uh, tomorrow for the third street. I don't know if I can get on the list and perform, but I'll come down and check it I out. I happen to know the guy who runs that. So I, think you're all right. <laughs> I don't want to take somebody's spot or anything. Whatever. Um, and I'm also going to be at Harris, uh, Thursday, this Thursday and, uh, next Thursday. Wait, is he doing the locals thing? It's just going to be these next two weeks for some reason. Like it's, it's I up forgot, and, I forgot the date. All right. I'll come yeah. down to that too then. Yeah. Um, come check that out. And then um, I think in two weeks I'm going to be at the uh, Pioneer Underground for the uh, the uh, semifinals of the comedy competition. I took second in the first round, so it's looking pretty good. Great. Yeah. Go win that, man. Yeah, I'm going to tear it up, man. I, at the last uh, competition they had in May, I took third, which was cool. I got like 250 bucks or whatever. So it was a Great. nice little payout. So. Yeah, I got some things rocking, man. Every Tuesdays, we're going to be doing this Drake's Crusty Couch. So uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Dante, thank you so much for coming on the show, Absolutely, man. Absolutely, man. Really it's appreciate been good talking it. to you, brother. You guys. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah, we'll have to do this again Don't real soon. Don't forget, if you're in L.A. on a Monday or a Tuesday, come into our show at, at Universal Studios and do that podcast. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. It's at Universal Studios? Yeah, it's awesome. Dude, that's, that's awesome. awesome. <laughs> I used to work at Universal Studios at Wetzel's Pretzels uh, in like 2000, 2001, something like that. And uh, I got I got fired for giving pretzels away. Yeah. <laughs> you gave out like 30 free pretzels. Yeah, like buddies would walk by. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, that's what the thing is. They they costed uh, f- like five cents to make. They sold them for like six, seven bucks. You know, it's like a three hundred percent fucking markup. You know, yeah. But I got yeah. canned. They had like a whole sting operation too. Like this guy, like security guy, comes down. He's like, hey man, this is like head of security of the whole fucking place. He sits down and he's like, tell me, they got me on tape. They got me on footage. I was like, you guys really called out. The Universal Studios SWAT team to see me giving away five cent pretzels. I'll show myself out. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's awesome. Yeah, this is fun. So cool, man. We're we'll going to wrap this up and uh, we'll give you a call after the show. Yeah, I'm thanks, up. brother. I'm so glad that you were able to k- go on the show. It's awesome. Yeah, thanks a bunch. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. So I'll fun. do it any, any week you guys want. Fabulous. Fabulous. All right, take care. All right, yeah, you man. too, man. Take care. So for Dante and Wayne Walsh, this is Drake Nelson. Good night.